Hello and welcome to the broadcast today. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins and uh, this is lesson two on uh, the word of. You say the word of. Yeah, the word of because Cheryl's uh, been studying this and we've been studying together on the, the broadcast and I hope you're, uh, you got your Bible, your notebook, something uh, where you can, and you can always rewind and watch again if you're why some, some people uh, watch part of it on their lunch break or, or while they're on the road and can't watch it all. Uh, but you can always, it's going to be on there. It's going to be on uh, YouTube as well. So um, uh, powerful word that, that uh, God stirred in Cheryl's heart and in my heart. And uh, we, we, we hope your heart because it's a life-giving word. And uh, I want to thank all the, the those that are watching. Thank, thank those that are, our, our audience seems to be increasing week by week. And uh, we appreciate that, and uh, we would, we just pray every day. Uh, as I pray for my partners, I also pray for the listeners and the, those that are watching, and uh, believe that God will will touch you and minister to you. And today, as we uh, as we go into the Word of God, we want to pray that our ears be open, that we hear by the Spirit of God, that our hearts be uh, receptive to what God is saying, and uh, you just take what God gives you during this time. And let it be life and spirit to you. And uh, we're going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We, as we pray for this broadcast today, we also pray for the listener. We pray for those that are have, you have drawn this way by your spirit, God, to hear this broadcast. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you just touch them, God, whether they're in America or whether they're in around the world, maybe Pakistan or Thailand or Africa or or some other uh, place, God, we thank you, Lord, that we've got pe listeners, people all the way in the Antarctic uh, or, or uh, uh, in the colder <laughs> colder parts of the world. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord, that have joined us. And uh, uh, we thank you, Lord, that you just minister, God, to those all over the world, across America and around the world. We pray, God, that you'll continue to send forth this word of life. And God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you uh, cause your power uh, God, to move and quicken us, God, your quickening power, God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead quickens our mortal bodies. And God, we feel a quickening today, God, as we pray, as we go, join together, God, that you're touching uh, bodies, that you're touching minds, you're touching soul, spirits, God, in the name of Jesus, that you just enhance the word of God in our lives and let us just receive the Lord Jesus on every level that we can. And God, we give you thanks, we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, Cheryl, uh, we we had a great lesson on the last time, and uh, looking forward to what we're doing this time. All righty. Well, we're talking about the word of faith, and um, in Christianity, faith is the basis for everything. So it is important for us to understand and have the word of faith in us, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I want to pick up where we left off a little bit. And it is, faith is a form of believing. So as we believe in and on Jesus Christ, in his reality, the fact that he's alive today, um, we're brought into salvation. And we're not going to be ashamed. So this is the beginning of our salvation. But salvation is a journey in God. Because what is he doing? We are new creations when we obey what we talked about in the first lesson in Romans 10. And as we begin this new life, the scripture tells us we're made a new creation. Amen. Something inside of us. Our body doesn't change right now. But inside of us, our spirit man wakes up. And all of a sudden, our spirit comes alive and we begin to experience real life, not just existing. Now, we are three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. So, our spirit is now alive unto God. It can receive the things of God and the communication from God. But the soul part of us, which is our thinking processes, our mind, our emotional being, and our decision-making processes. Mm -hmm. All of that part of us, our soul, has been conditioned by the world in which we grew up in yeah. or live in today. 
and uh, a lot of that is not good. A lot of it is very negative. It's very um, full of death words. Worry brings anxieties. Fear, 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 fear is such a big deal in the world. Well, that is part of our salvation. Amen. The Holy Spirit, <clears throat> God within us, begins to teach us and we move from that kind of a mindset and thoughts of death into thoughts of life. Amen. Those thoughts come strictly through the Word of God and that Word becoming a part of us. So um, he Hebrews 11.6 says this. Now this is very important. But without faith it is impossible to please Him, that is God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is or that he exists and that he's a rewarder of the person that diligently seeks him. So I want to talk about a couple things here. Um, it's always kind of bothered me about the phrase it's impossible to please him. <laughs> so I had to do a little digging on that. Um, Please or well-pleasing is the Strong's interpretation. But if you go to the root word of that, it means to agree with him or to walk in agreement. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here, um, just from our English word, pleasing, to please is to have confidence in the person or in God as we're speaking of, in his integrity. For instance, uh, we want our children to please us when we ask them to do something. It pleases us. And let's say, for example, go clean your room, Susie. <laughs> and she goes and cleans her rooms. That's pleasing to us. So God is no different. We're made in the image of God. But also agreeing with Him is knowing the wisdom of God and having confidence in Him and in His wisdom. So um, when we do that, then things begin to change in our life. He promises that he'll reward the person that diligently seeks after him. Now, the Bible uses the word seek a lot of times. Whoa. That means to seek in order to find something. Not just seek forever and ever and ever and not get anywhere. We seek to find something. So in our seeking... We're finding God. All right, so faith, the word faith is having a firm persuasion or being absolutely fully persuaded that what God said is true. And um, believing is to have faith in the integrity of God and in His Word. All right, so salvation is being rescued out of a life of darkness. Do you ever have dark days when your thoughts are just they're just a mess, and you can't get up out of it. Well, Jesus Christ paid the price. He took a crown of thorn on his head for our well-being, for our peace of mind, for us to think with a sound mind. Amen. Amen. So he rescues us out of a life of darkness, misery, destruction. Have your behaviors in the past been destructive to you? Well, I know mine certainly have. But I didn't know any other way to behave. People think that it's just so easy, but sometimes it's not so easy. Um, but anyhow, Jesus Christ has made a way for us to come out of all these destructive behaviors and thoughts. And salvation encompasses everything necessary to live life to the fullest right here on earth which includes health in our spirit, soul, and body, health in our finances, health in our relationships. Salvation includes having a sound mind, the ability to love and care for others properly in a proper manner, not taking advantage of each other, um, as well as having a proper love and respect for ourselves. Our salvation includes a relationship with a loving Father who desires to bless us with everything good and everything profitable for our life. That's the truth. You'll find it written in the Holy Bible in many different places. 
All right, so we're talking about the word of faith. Um, a lot of people think that it's just so hard to have faith, but that's not the truth. Faith is not something unreachable or mysterious. It's a conscious action. You might say a conscious decision on our part to believe in the integrity of the Almighty God and what His Word, the Holy Bible, says to us concerning us and concerning everything about God and His character, concerning how we uh, build our relationships. And then it becomes our responsibility to speak out what we're reading. So let's say, for example, that uh, we read in Romans where it says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Jesus said uh, to forgive others, but we have this relationship where we don't feel a bit of love towards this person. Uh, they may have done damage to us. Uh, but what we do is we consciously believe what God said. Because if we will believe that the love of God really is in us, and that it's our responsibility to forgive whether we feel like it or not, then if we know God's character, we know that if we obey those two things, something good is going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. But we make that decision. That's our responsibility. We clearly say the love of God is in my heart and I will love this person. I choose to forgive this person and I know that God will bring my emotions in line with better feelings towards this person and he will do it. It may take a little time and you may have to make those confessions for a few days or even a long time, but the word of God will come to pass in your life and before you know it, you will have loving thoughts and feelings towards that person that has offended you. All right, so... <clears throat> Romans 12.3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every person that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Alright, so here we see that God's already given us a measure of faith. He gave us enough to start our salvation journey. So we start our salvation journey, and the scripture says that faith grows in several places, and um, so we grow from faith to faith, and as our faith is developed, we become more fully persuaded of everything God says. We start out at the beginning, and as we keep going, then our faith grows to, to know, to absolutely know and be convinced that we can trust what God has Amen. said and Praise it will happen. Jesus. So um, we have the measure of faith. No one can use the excuse, I don't have any faith, because that is a lie. It is contrary Amen. to what God has said. So you need to get rid of that thought right now. Accept the fact that God has given you a measure of faith Amen. to begin with. All right. Um, I will say this, there is one thing that can stop faith from working. Um, the Lord brought this to my mind this morning, so somebody needs to hear it. I'm going to throw it out here. It's in Psalms 101.3. And it's uh, the psalmist saying, I will set no wicked, no worthless thing before my eyes. Um, what happens when we do that? Things that are not profitable to our life, we don't need to be paying attention to. We don't need to be seeing it, listening to it, because it stunts our faith. And it can even get to the point that it steals our faith. Uh, this, see, wicked and worthless things come from the kingdom of darkness, the realm of Satan. And this... I think this was David's psalm, if I'm not mistaken, but he said, I'm going to take precautions here. I'm going to watch what I, what I watch. <laughs> I'm going to be careful and guard my heart of what I'm seeing on television or videos or what have you. 
I'm going to be very guarded of what I hear, mm. who I'm listening to. Don't listen to a bunch of negative people around you. The people in your life have a great influence on you. And some of them we can't just get rid of. But we have to guard our heart. The scripture tells us mm. to guard our heart. Be like a soldier and have your sword ready. And if you have to get away from the person to get your thoughts re-centered, then, you know, you can do it graciously. All right. So, the word of faith, going back to Romans 10, is believing that Jesus Christ is now our righteousness. See, righteousness is being able to to know, being able to know that we can stand before God or sit before God as we are, not be afraid, not be ashamed, but knowing that we are his precious child and we can communicate back and forth and we do it respectfully. We can do it very frankly because sometimes we have problems that we have to talk out and get answers to. Amen. But here's how it is that we can do that. So first or excuse me, second Corinthians five twenty one says, For he hath made him, that is, for God has made him Jesus, to be sin for us. So Jesus, when he was on the cross, he took all of that sin. Every sin we've ever, any human has ever committed, he, it was laid on Jesus at the cross. And he didn't know any sin because the scripture says he walked a sinless life here on Amen. earth. But he gave himself willingly to take our sin into his own self. And uh, then he made this exchange. I will take their sin and Father, you give them my righteousness. And that's what happened. Amen. So whenever Satan comes trying to remind you of the sinful behaviors from your past, you stand on this scripture right here. Yes, sir. This is a rhema word of God right here. We do not take back those sins. We don't take back the memory of it. We don't take back the feelings of remorse and all of those things. Whatever happened... We say, no, Father, I'm standing right here in your presence. Wash me of all of this. I believe your word that I am righteous before you. I'm not guilty. Amen. Learn to say that. I Amen. am not guilty. <clears throat> all of my sin was placed on Jesus. I'm not that same Amen. person anymore. Thank you, Jesus. I am not guilty, Praise and God. I will not take it Amen. back on myself. <clears throat> All right, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved, talking about our salvation again, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. It's not of any works we can do, not a bit. Not of works, because if we can do it by our works, then we can be boastful about it. But we can't. We yeah. take that exchange. We receive by faith. What Jesus Christ did, believing that our sin has been washed away, the scripture says that God cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. If he forgets it, we don't need to be remembering it. So we recognize that it's God's gift to us. We didn't earn this gift to have all our sins washed away. And you know, God can heal the memories. He can take those memories and... If necessary, take them completely out of you or show a different way to look at the memories. The point of it is, whichever way it is, we do not take back the guilt for sin that Jesus Christ has taken for us. And we all that know God know John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world, so loved with a great and intense love, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever, any person, anywhere on the face of the earth that believes in Jesus should not perish, should not live a life of death, should not live a life of misery, Amen. 
but should have everlasting life, that is, continual life flowing in us. For God didn't send Jesus, his Son, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved, saved out of all this misery, out of the darkness, out of the gloominess, and bring us into life. All right, so the life word that is in our mouth, that is the word of faith in Jesus Christ, that he gave his life in exchange for mine, for yours, that we can walk free of sin and darkness. Darkness is ignorance and misery. It's not being able to see our clay, uh, our way clearly. It's confusion. Those things are not what we walk in with Jesus Christ. He brings us free of that. Uh, it's part of death, poverty, and sickness. He brings us out of all of that. And brings us into a true life Amen. of prosperity. Yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the scripture tells us about faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Faith works by love. Hope is in the middle. I learned this this morning, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful lesson. Hope is in the middle. And hope is an expectation of something we can't see visible, but we see in our imagination. See, God created us in the image of himself. And now we are being created in the image of Christ. That means we have the ability to image ourselves, To see ourselves full of life, free from sickness, free from all these horrible uh, thoughts and arrows that come at us that like to try to get us all into confusion. Hope gives us an expectation that will move faith, that will bring it to pass. <clears throat> all right, mister, you finish it up. Minutes. Amen. You know, the good teaching, Cheryl. We're still on the word of faith. You, you're talking about the word of, the whole series right. is going to be on it. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the word of faith. And I think the, the thing I'm really seeing jump out of me, uh, out to me, is that uh, faith has a voice. That there's a sound of faith. Uh, and, you know, I, I think about Abraham as he uh, went through that uh wilderness as he went left his father's house and and he constantly talked uh the word of faith that i'm especially once god changed his name from abram to abraham uh, i'm the father of many nations so faith faith has a voice we need to learn to speak the language of faith uh, faith is just not something well oh, i'm trying to have faith oh let me, i'm trying to believe god for this no faith uh, takes action. So whenever we're, we are believing for something, our words need to reflect that. Uh, many times we lose what we're, uh, when we begin to talk negatively, and you say, well, Brother Roger, this is this, I want to hear something deep or whatever, but you know what? I look at people walking in the kingdom of God, and I see most of them are defeated. Most of them uh, are not walking in a victorious life. Uh, this is the word of faith. Uh, by the way, Cheryl's got uh, got a book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, I don't. I don't think we have it one or two here right now. But uh, but look on Amazon and you can find it. Um, the Just Shall Live by Faith by Cheryl Hutchins. Uh, we do get. She does get a, a, a royalty on that if you order it from them. Uh, but um, uh, let me encourage you to get that. The word of faith, though, has a voice. That, that's, the, that, that's basically that's right. what I want that's us to right. hear. It has a voice. Uh, anything that has a voice, to manifest that voice, you have to open your mouth. And that's what it said in our very beginning scripture. The words near you, it's not far away from you, even in your mouth. That's Amen. what it said. Even so right, right there's where your victory is. Yes. 
you know, you're wondering when your victory is going to come. Let me tell you, your victory comes when you open your mouth. Yes. And you begin to speak victory instead of defeat. If you're opening your mouth and constantly uh, talking about how bad things are and about how uh, the devil did this, the devil did that. No, the devil's defeated. The only, the only way he's not defeated is when you or I give him uh, right. power and victory through our words. So the word of faith is near you, even in your mouth. That's good, Cheryl. Uh, so, and, and just remember, faith has a voice. So if you're believing for something, you're having faith for something, speak. open your mouth yes. and let it come forth and speak the word of God. Amen. Amen. I speak the word of God over you today. And Cheryl, as we go off the, the program today, we speak the word of God over you. If you're suffering with sickness or disease, we speak the healing power yes. of God in faith. We open our mouth Thank and we agree with the Word of God that says, By His stripes, we, you and me, were healed. And then we are healed. So let's confess that. Let's believe that. We speak the Word of God that no weapon formed against you will prosper, uh, but you will, you will overcome. You are an overcomer. And that's the word of faith. And that's, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking it for myself right now. Let's, uh, let's just believe God together and open our mouth yes. and let the word of faith come out of our mouth. Then we see what God can do. Cheryl, will you pray and take us off today? Father, we are so grateful for your word. We're so privileged and honored to have the Holy Bible. And we need to utilize it. It is our sword. We thank you, Father, for the people of God all over the earth, the body of Christ, that you bless them, that the word will so stir in them deeply, and we will truly begin to live by what you have said yes, and Lord. walk and live in yes, the blessings Jesus. you've promised. Let faith arise in us. Let it be stirred up again. Father, for those who do not know you and your beautiful Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that you will, by your Spirit, draw them to you, to Jesus, and that they will understand that this salvation belongs to them, that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And we just speak the blessing of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now healing power flows. Amen. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you're touching people who really need a healing in their soul, in their mind, in their emotions. Those that need to forgive, Father, we speak forth a strength of forgiveness to flow. We thank you that your anointing destroys these yokes off of people that have harbored offense for years and years and years. Set them free, Father. And Father, we pray for those with financial needs that you will truly show them the direction and the way for their needs to be met, and you will answer their prayers, and that you will glorify yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you praise and thanksgiving. You're a God who can meet every person's need, no matter what it is. And we believe you. We believe you, and we have confidence that you're not a liar, but you're the truth. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Now take that. Take that. Receive what the prayer that's been prayed over you and receive that. Take it and hold on to it and let, let your faith have a voice. God bless you and we'll see you next time.